Now, when it comes to video games, everybody loves a good challenge, but it is very appreciated when developers put in different difficulty modes to allow anyone to approach their game. But sometimes difficulty modes come along that are so, uh, well, flat out broken that they boggle the mind. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game difficulty modes that are utterly broken. Number 10, Veteran Difficulty, Call of Duty World at War. In the vast majority of the Call of Duty games, veteran difficulty represents the absolute highest level of challenge. And while most entries into the series manage to offer a veteran experience that is tough but fair, 2008's World at War took the concept to a level of infuriating self-parody. Now, The big problem that breaks World at War's veteran mode is that the enemy soldiers are programmed to effectively spam the player with grenades during any prolonged combat encounter, more often than not causing the player's death. There's no attempt here by developers Treyarch to establish a a convincing line of sight between the player and the AI, just an unrelenting shower of explosives that you need to dash through in order to get to the next checkpoint. Beyond that, AI spawns are extremely fast, ensuring that moving forward through a level feels like a near Herculean feat, and your own brain-dead AI teammates generally won't offer up much assistance. The infamous level, the Heart of the Reich, is by far the greatest indicator of how broken veteran mode truly is, an endurance trial of raining grenades and brutally unfair checkpointing which all but the most Committed Call of Duty players never even made it past. Number 9. Hard Riddle Difficulty Silent Hill 3 Silent Hill is a terrific and challenging game no matter what difficulty you play it on, and offered up separate difficulty options for combat and puzzles. Those who selected Hard Riddle difficulty, however, likely weren't ready for the obscure knowledge required to make it through without using a guide. This difficulty setting takes some of the game's already tricky puzzles and renders them nigh on impossible unless you're armed with the required knowledge, namely the infamous Shakespeare keypad puzzle which required players to deduce a numerical combination from pages of Shakespeare's plays. If if your English literature knowledge is lacking, you're basically screwed here. For while the Bard is obviously one of the most widely known authors in history, you need both a firm knowledge of his works and an ability to apply this to a mathematical puzzle. To make matters worse, the Shakespeare puzzle appears extremely early in the game, and several other puzzles throughout the hard riddle difficulty also require players to intuit the most ridiculous and subtle clues. It is, in a word, ridiculous. Number 8. Nightmare Mode – Back for Blood Though it was largely marketed as a casual, squad-based multiplayer zombie shooter, Back for Blood actually offers a surprising amount of pushback even on its lower difficulties. The game's highest difficulty setting, Nightmare Mode, however, proved to be so unacceptably, brutally, cheaply, and unfairly difficult that fans went to social media in droves to beg Turtle Rock Studios to nerf it. Nightmare Mode massively raises the difficulty levels in several different ways, by having the undead spawn in far greater numbers, introducing a larger abundance of corruption cards which result in unfavorable gameplay modifiers and massively boosting friendly fire damage. Many complained that crowd control was simply impossible with this amount of enemies, especially as they now took more damage and the game's audio didn't sufficiently alert players to enemies emerging behind them. Turtle Rock did eventually nerf Nightmare's difficulty to be more tolerable, though many fans nevertheless insist it is still a total mess from a design and pure entertainment perspective. So yeah, utterly broken kind of fits the bill here. Number 7. Unbeatable Driver Tard Difficulty Forza Horizon 5 now make no mistake, Forza Horizon 5 is a brilliant game, and arguably one of the greatest racing games, and say it with me kids, of all time! Now, it refreshingly offers up granular gameplay options to help players tailor the experience to their desired levels of difficulty, though those who pick unbeatable difficulty, the highest setting for their AI rivals, aka driver tasks, will have a nasty surprise lying in wait. Within hours of the game's release, fans took to social media to protest the patently unfair skills of unbeatable driver tasks, who beyond their rubber banding expected from just about any racing game, are able to break the laws of physics to take corners and maneuver around the tracks in ways that players simply can't. The unbeatable driver tars have always been tricky, hence the name, but Forza Horizon 5 makes little attempt to disguise how blatantly the AI is cheating. As a result, players can play near perfectly and still come up massively short. If an unbeatable AI is truly unbeatable, then is there any point taking it on? Number 6. Legendary Difficulty Halo 2 
Now, I know what a lot of you are going to be saying, but I've beaten Halo 2's campaign on Legendary Difficulty. I too have beaten this. It is definitely a challenge you can get through, but let's take a closer look at the mode, because if we pull back the curtain, it's kind of broken. As is expected from the highest difficulty of any such game, the enemies here are in much greater number. Their AI routines are significantly more ruthless, and weaker enemy types are replaced by tougher ones. Uber dangerous ultra elites are now pretty common, and perhaps worst of all, jackal snipers will appear regularly and kill the player with a single bloody shot. Even those hoping to make the experience bearable through co-op gameplay aren't helped much here, as if one of you dies, you both have to start again from the last checkpoint, as has surely wrecked more than a few friendships over the last 20 years or so. Factoring in all of this, in addition to Master Chief's shield resistance having been halved, and we get a legendary mode that is basically an exercise in self-flagellation for anyone who dares attempt it. Prevailing in it is as much about luck as it is skill, really, with the logic being that if you throw enough Master Chiefs at a situation, eventually you must succeed. Between the sheer absurd difficulty and some rather dodgy spawning issues, which see you get immediately melted by enemy fire, it's clear that Bungie didn't sufficiently test this mode, presumably due to the game's infamously rushed production. It is the epitome of a difficulty mode that is just egregiously unbalanced, and really, if we're being honest, not that much fun. Number 5. Ultimate Difficulty – FIFA 20 Though FIFA 20 received broadly positive reviews from most of the gaming press upon its release, the response from hardcore players and especially the esports community was decidedly more mixed. Of particular note was the game's horribly unbalanced difficulty settings, particularly when playing Ultimate Difficulty in FIFA 20's career mode after an infamous patch was released in January 2020. Rather than have your AI opponents play smarter and more tactically in line with the greatest players on the planet, Ultimate Difficulty basically just gave every member of the opposing team a massive stat boost, such that they could run shoot and defend like the best of the best every single time. Even if you're playing as one of the best teams in the game against an AI squad as one of the worst, you're still not beyond getting spanked about 6-0. Worse still, this created a massive chasm of difficulty between Legendary, which some players found too easy, and the new Ultimate, which many felt took things too far in the other direction and basically ruined the entire game. Number 4. Give Me God of War Difficulty God of War 2018 God of War 2018 may be one of the greatest games of the last generation, but its hardest difficulty mode, Give Me God of War, is a pain in the ass beyond compare, enough so that it legitimately qualifies as broken. Like other busted difficulty modes on this list, it's painfully apparent that it wasn't properly playtested to be a genuinely achievable thing by an acceptable number of players. And I mean, where to begin with this? The start of the game is one of the hardest parts because Kratos isn't kitted out with good gear, and because enemies have tons more health than in lower difficulties, you can spend a frankly absurd amount of time chipping away at them before they finally go down. Even those who take joy in conquering a game's hard-as-nails difficulty may find this more of a boring slog than an entertaining challenge, so needlessly sponge you even the most standard of enemies. Oh, and they're also able to level up mid-fight and negate your process. Boo. Artificial difficulty might be an overused term in this day and age, but it more than fits Give Me God of War, which rather than creatively scale up enemy aggression in a tactile and interesting way, just gives them a stupid amount of health for you to hack away at for 15 minutes. And worst of all, if you make some headway in this before deciding to switch difficulties, Give Me God of War doesn't allow you to lower the difficulty down, so you'll have to start the entire game again. Number 3. I Am Death Incarnate Difficulty Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus Many players were taken aback by just how difficult Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus was on even more reasonable difficulties, though the highest difficulty available at the start of the game, I Am Death Incarnate, somehow manages to one-up God of War in feeling like an abject chore. Basically, every enemy you encounter has pitch-perfect aim and will make short work of you if given even a nanosecond of an opportunity. Enemies will kill you in just a couple of shots while requiring a full hail of bullets to go down themselves. It turns what should be a fun Nazi killing romp into a totally dull slog, where the gonzo flow of combat players want from a game like this, even on higher difficulties, is fatally interrupted. But the part of the game that is sure to break even the most hardened of players on this difficulty is the courthouse battle, which is a car crash of grenade spam and enemies spawning seemingly out of nowhere. Making it through this is more about luck and persistence than actual skill, and is that really what anyone wants? Unsurprisingly, many players simply resorted to save scumming to make their way through it, and yet I Am Death Incarnate isn't even the hardest difficulty of this game. Those pressure just few who force themselves through to the end of this mode will unlock Mindleben difficulty, a parody of an insanely difficult mode which touts the same parameters as I Am Death Incarnate, but with the added rub that death is permanent and saves are disabled. Basically, you have to beat the game without dying once. And yet because of this, it feels so much like a joke difficulty setting that it doesn't feel genuinely broken. Because is anyone actually supposed to get past it? I Am Death Incarnate, on the other hand, feels desperately in need of a polite nerf. 
Number 2. Crushing Difficulty Uncharted 4 A Thief's End Crushing difficulty has always been a massive challenge in the Uncharted games, though the fourth main game took this to such absurdly punishing extremes as to suggest that Naughty Dog didn't actually test it that much. Throughout the series, crushing difficulty has made combat supremely more challenged by halving the damage that Nate deals to enemies while doubling the damage he receives. In A Thief's End, this extended to the stealth meter also being disabled, as well as enemy tagging, requiring players to rely entirely on their own situational awareness. While crushing has always represented a massive challenge to play, Players, and Uncharted 4, it was more obvious than ever that the game hadn't been designed around such an outrageous degree of difficulty. There are numerous levels where the sheer number of enemies will be overwhelming to about 99.98% of players, while the game is utterly stingy with its ammo to a frankly indecent degree, and those attempting to harness Nate's acrobatic abilities will be rewarded with a hasty death. The exploding mummy room from the game's 19th chapter, which is a fairly straightforward sequence on lower difficulties, is rendered a controller-throwingly infuriating farce on crushing enough that players may well give in for the sake of their skyrocketing blood pressure. And number 1. Hard Mode – Slave Zero Cult classic action game Slave Zero is a relatively challenging title even on lower difficulties, though those who dare to play on hard difficulty will find that they probably can't even beat the bloody game. The final boss fight against Sovkan is rendered unwinnable for most players due to one baffling design oversight. His HP is higher than the damage that all the ammo in the arena plus your own ammo stash can possibly deal to him. Furthermore, though there technically are extra ammo pickups on the map due to various graphical and physical glitches, they're rendered inaccessible to the player. Only those few who still have the Valhalla missile launcher from earlier on in the game, which most will have discarded, could take the final boss down, and this, being a game released in 1999 and all, wasn't something that could simply be remedied with a quick day one patch. So yeah, Utterly Broken doesn't even begin to cover it. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game difficulty modes that are utterly broken. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friend, because I know that sometimes life can feel like you're playing on the most crushingly difficult of modes, but if that is the case, then remember, you can speak to people about your problems, friends, family, professionals, in the support industry. These people care about you and want you to do well. So make sure that you're constantly discussing things and taking a break every chance that you can, because that will give you some time for some self-reflection and to basically just recharge the batteries. But more importantly than all of this, I know you can do it. Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.